go ahead and get started. I have a lot to show you guys today. I have been super, super productive this week. Um, I finally finished <laughs> one tiny little thing here. I finally finished uh, painting my little key. I painted it gold. And then I added some black wax into it so that it gave it some depth and then just glued it on here. And I'm glad to finally have this done. Hi, Lois, glad to see you. Um, so anyway, this piece is done. Um, you know, every little piece counts. And then today I was really proud of myself, you guys, because sometimes and I think a lot of you probably feel this way too, is that sometimes when you're working on a project and it's something you haven't done before, it can, well, hello, my friend, Melissa. Hi, Mickey. It can be a little intimidating. And so I had reached a point on this window pane where I hit the point where I was intimidated on it. And of course I procrastinated telling me I need to get started here. Um, so the part that I hit the wall on was I had the corbels to put on this window, but I really, really wasn't sure what the best way uh, to attach the corbels were. And um, so this morning I just figured it out. I just needed to screw some holes in there because they had slides on it and then I would glue them on there and then I went out into the garage and it's a good thing I just have everything a person needs in their garage and I had a board that was exactly the right width that I needed for this shelf, but it was the wrong length. But I do have several saws, a miter saw, a table saw, a few other saws. So I cut it the length that I needed and got it painted today. And it's painted with Dixie Bell um, coffee bean, which is part of my staple, you guys. I use coffee bean and chocolate uh, and pine cone all the time when I want a wood look, but this is super pretty when you use it with the crackle. And so I got this base coated. It only needs one coat when you're putting the crackle over it. So let me put the camera down and I'll show you where we are. Let me flip that around. Hi, Sue. Okay, let me see if I've got you guys in good camera range here. A little further down, I think. Okay, so there you guys can see um, what well, went too far? There you guys can see what the um, crackle looks like. So last week I painted on crackle in one section just so you guys could see how it needs to be painted on. And um, then today I painted over the crackle because I wasn't sure in all honesty, my crackle seemed, this is the Dixie Belle crackle and it did seem to be a little bit off and I had stirred and stirred and stirred it really, really good. And it still seemed like it was off. And so I just wanted to test it to make sure that there wasn't something wrong with my crackle. Um, and it worked just fine. So I just guess it needed a good stirring. Um, and I use crackle all the time. So uh, I just wanted to be sure when I went live today that 
everything was working the way it was supposed to. So I painted this section and I'm painting the whole window in Dixie Belle drop cloth. I love this color and I use it a lot. And I was originally gonna use fluff on this window and then I changed my mind and went to drop cloth. When I'm doing crackle, I typically either use um, fluff or drop cloth. And so that's what we're gonna use today. And I'm using um, a Dixie Belle mini brush for most of it. And this is just a tip if you've never heard this tip before. If you stop painting and you know you're gonna go back to it, um, just spray your brush and stick it in a Ziploc bag and then you can just pull it back out. That way you aren't washing off a lot of paint um, and just washing it down the drain. So if you know you're not gonna get back to it for a day or two, do the same thing. Wet your brush, put it in your bag, and stick it in your refrigerator. So uh, let's get started, you guys. In case I didn't mention it, which I don't think I did, I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs, and I have a booth in Surprise, Arizona at the uh, Ground Floor Artist, which is a super awesome place, and every time somebody new comes to visit me there, they are just blown away because it is a really, really cool place, you guys. It's worth making a trip, even if you're not super close by. And um, I do teach classes there, so if you go on my website, um, I have a whole bunch of classes coming up in July. It's Christmas in July, so everything is Christmas themed. And I also have a class coming up this Friday and this Thursday and Friday that is an online class. So if you aren't here locally, but you would still like to take a class, that's a good class to take. We're going to be doing a decoupage on silver trays, silver plated trays, and that class starts, I don't know what time that class starts, you guys. I'm going to have to look it up myself, but it's on my website. Okay, so I'm just dipping my brush into some of the drop cloth, and I'm going to scoot this camera around a bit so you can see. I think I moved it the right direction. Yep, I did. Okay, and so it's important that you put on a good coat, but don't go over it and over it and over it because it's going to start cracking up pretty darn fast. And personally, I don't think that it's important to get every square inch of it because I like having some of it just exposed. It gives it um, more of a um, distressed look. So I'm just putting it on and it's only gonna take one coat and as soon as I get down here on the end, I'll move the camera back up so you can see because it has already started cracking. So let me move the camera back up for you guys. I, in fact, I'd like to just move it down a little. This is where I just started painting, is right here. And you can see it's already starting to crackle. And so what I would like you to uh, pay attention to here is that when you're using the crackle paint, like I put on the coffee bean on here because that, I wanted this dark brown color coming through. But what I want you to realize and to think about is you can put any color back here. So whatever 
color you put down for your base color is gonna be the color that comes through in the cracks. And um, I had a gal up in uh, Heber Overgaard, she did a hutch and she painted the base color in barn. Um, so she painted it in barn red and then she used drop cloth on top of that. So in her cracks, that red comes shining through, which I think is really awesome. And I've done pieces where, because you all know how much I love green, I've done pieces where I've used palmetto uh, for the base and then the drop cloth on top so that green is shining through. So it's really versatile. It's a really cool look. It's a really cool effect. And it's already cracked this whole length. I painted this whole side here and it's already cracked that whole length. I'm bringing the camera up so you can see. So cool. So I'm gonna put the camera back down and we'll do a small, sec a small section on the inside of the pane here. So again, it's super important that you don't backstroke on this. Okay, so now I'm painting on the inside of this. And I put painter's tape down on this so it would just be easier to um, clean off any paint I get on the glass. And it may still have some seepage in the very edges of it. Um, and I'll just use a, a flat edge razor blade to remove that. So it'll be easy cleanup. So does anybody have any questions? Oh, it looks like I just saw the questions come up. Hold on. I haven't tried the Pintart Crackle yet. I'm, I'm planning on, you guys, I'm planning on going up to Heber, um, Heber Overgaard next week, and I'll be up there for two weeks with my daughter and family. And we have a lot of projects planned, and, uh, I'm going to go live up there because some of those projects you might be interested in seeing. One of them is I'm painting my daughter's bathroom floor and um, she, you know, eventually is planning on putting new flooring down in the whole house. Um, but I talked her into letting me paint that floor and we're gonna paint it um, using the wood grain tool and making it look like a wood plank floor. And that bathroom floor is a really small area, so it's not gonna take a lot of effort. So I'm gonna do that on one of my lives from up there. And um, we're also painting her kitchen cabinets. I'm gonna move the camera back around here. And we're using the silk paint and sun kissed on her kitchen cabinets. So I thought I would do that. And then we're hanging wood plank, um, wood plank plywood wallpaper. I'm looking for my, here it is, uh, in the upstairs loft. So we have lots of projects that we're working on. And I'll see if I can take that pin tart with me and just give it a try up there. I'm looking forward to going up there. Uh, my friend Pamela lives up there and I'll get to visit with her and be with my kids and it'll just be nice. Okay, so 
I want to be sure you guys are in camera. Now I'm going to paint that corbel. I know I'm painting on the inside of it and you can't see it, but just bear with me. I'll paint over the top of it and you'll be able to see that. So what do you guys think of this project? If you like this project, give me some hearts. And see how across the top of this, I left some of it with the wood just showing through. That's what I mean about leaving it with that if you have spots on it that don't get painted, that kind of just leaves a, a distressed look to it in a, in a really natural way. Now, one important thing when you're using Crackle, you guys, is to, um, Always let it dry really well. A good rule of thumb, honestly, is to put it on and let it dry overnight. And then go and put your top coat on. I put this crackle on this morning and it's been in this room that's fairly warm and I had the ceiling fan blowing on it all day, so I figured it was probably good to go. I'm going to resume painting over here. Lois had asked me what the process is for putting the crackle on. So you put your base coat of paint on, which was in this case, I used um, coffee bean, which is a really deep, dark brown, and let that dry. And then I went on and put the crackle, and the crackle's where you see all of this shiny on here. And you need to let the crackle dry thoroughly, and I like to let it dry overnight. Um, today, I just got it on this morning, so it had about four hours to dry before the live video. And uh, I had the ceiling fan going on in here, so it had plenty of time to dry. And then when you're painting on your top coat, which I'm using uh, Dixie Bell drop cloth, and when you're painting it on, you need to just get it on and don't backstroke over it, because if you go to backstroke over it, you're gonna lift up that crackle that you've already put down. So you wanna be careful of that. Hi, Lois, I'm glad you got back on again. I was just explaining the process. So um, do you have any other questions about how to use the crackle? I don't know what point you got back on. So I know you can't see the back side of this corbel, but I'll be done with it here in just a minute. Okay. And I know you guys can see this section here. It's a pretty big piece, you guys. It's a six pane window. And then I built, I added on the corbels and then I'm adding on a shelf at the top. 
And I'm going to be putting like clothing hooks over here on each side so that you could um, hang jewelry or a hat or something decorative off of those pretty hooks. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the inside and I switched to a smaller brush. It's important that you don't backstroke over that crackle. Just put your paint on and move on. And like I explained earlier, I don't care if there are areas on here that, that I miss the paint on or there's not as much paint as the rest of it because to me that just adds a more distressed look to it. And when this is all dry, I can take a sanding block and sand off some of the edges to give it a more distressed look. I'm not a real big distressor, but um, I really do love this crackle and I, I really love using it. I do, it is a go-to pretty often. And, you know, I just put this paint on on the inside there, but it's already crackling. Crackle, crackle. And it does crackle pretty fast, um, but it seems like it's crackling faster today. And it could be because this room is warm and the ceiling fan is whirling above me, so it's probably drying it faster and causing that crackle to happen, which is perfectly fine with me. Just remember, what's important to remember is to not go back and backstroke when you've put the paint down. Don't go back and backstroke over it because then you're gonna disturb that crackling. Now, another thing that you can do is when you're all done, if you want, you can go back in with wax and shade and shadow it with the wax. For me, there is enough, um, enough, I can't think of the right word to, that I'm trying to use, but there's enough difference between the uh, coffee bean and the drop cloth I doubt I'll go back and shade um, with wax, but that would be an option if you uh, wanted to do that. Depth. That's it. Hey, Mary. Hey, Lisa. Glad you guys made it back. I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I'm pretty sure it's when I was turning off my alarm. I had set an alarm to remind myself to start the video and forgot to shut it off, and it kept going and going, and I reached up to turn it off, and I think I shut the video down when I did that. So you can see this goes pretty fast because it's um, one coat of your base coat. In this case, it's the coffee bean and you let it dry. And then it's one coat of the crackle and you let that dry really well. And I, I like to tell people, let it dry overnight. Uh, in Arizona, it's warm enough here, and like I said, I did it this morning and then let it dry for four hours before the live started, and it, it's doing really well. And then it's one coat of your whatever your top color is going to be.
And I had mentioned at the beginning of this video also that one of my customers in um, Pine Top did a hutch and she painted the base color in barn red and then crackled it and then painted the top coat in drop cloth like this. And so when it crackled, that barn red is what came through and that was super pretty. And I've done it using um, palmetto green underneath. I, um, booth, you guys, I have a sample board in there with several different base colors um, and, co and top colors painted on it so that it'll give you an idea of what it'll look like. So it's a project that goes pretty quick. It's important not to go back over where you've already painted because you run the risk of damaging the crackle and having it lift up on you. So just get it on and move on. So I've started uh, something new, you guys. First of all, I've got classes every single weekend, um, some twice in, in one day going on in July. And it's Christmas in July. And you guys should check the schedule and see if there's any classes that you're interested in. Um, they're all fun classes and they're relatively inexpensive and they all include your materials and everything for the class. So it's a good deal. Um, there's also two or three online classes available that you can just take at your own leisure. And I've started something new. Um, I had a couple of my uh, previous students request that I have like um, open workshop. And so I've started doing that every, every Monday and every Tuesday afternoon, or every Monday and every Wednesday afternoon. And it's three hours of open studio. You can bring whatever project you want to work on. And it's um, $10 for the three hours. And then of course you have to bring your project and whatever supplies uh, you're using on that project. But if you've got a furniture project that you're not sure um, how to do it, that's a really great time to come to class for $10 and learn how to paint a nightstand or whatever project you're working on. So we started that this week. It'll be really fun when I take this tape off, which won't be during the video. I love the pattern that this is cracked. It's super pretty. This is a really old window, you guys. And they're getting harder and harder to find. So when you're out uh, looking around, 
doing vintage shopping and such, if you come across them, you should grab them up because they're getting harder and harder to find. And sadly, they get more and more expensive. All right, I'm gonna stop one second here. And for those of you that didn't see this last week when I was working on this, this is off of Pinterest and this was my inspiration piece. I have it upside down. Um, and so it's a six pane window, just like this one is. And see how they have the hooks on each side. I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby always has beautiful hooks. And I picked up corbels at Home Depot and these look pretty similar. They're not exact, but they're pretty similar. And then I went out into my garage and cut myself a shelf um, to put over the top of those corbels. And I left the hinges on mine. I think it looks really um, cool with the hinges on. And I'll go back over the hinges with, um, I lost the shelf. I'll go back over the hinges with the um, posh pigment. That stuff is so beautiful. If you haven't tried the posh pigment, I really encourage you to try it. Um, it is a beautiful product. Now, I haven't put on this board that's a shelf, I haven't put the crackle on it yet. I only put the crackle on the window. I need to go back and crackle both sides of this um, shelf unit. But I'm putting it up here just so you guys can get an idea of how stinking cute this whole thing is. And you guys able to see? There's always a delay from what I see and what you guys see. Okay, so there's the corbels. And then I leaned the brown shelf up behind it. There's the other corbel. And right here are the hinges. And I'm gonna go back and paint them with the um, posh pigment. Um, or I think I'll use the posh pigment I'm not sure what color. There's three different colors in gold. But you can see how pretty the crackle is on this. Now I still need to paint this side over here. That's the last side that I need to paint. But it really crackled nicely. It's all really uh, a uni nice uniform crackle. And I still need to put the crackle on the shelf and do the same thing with it. And see how I left some not painted there? Um, I left it on purpose because I like how that looks and I can take a sanding block and distress it a little bit more. So let me see if you guys have any questions uh, on your spoon. Now this hutch back here that was that was a two-piece hutch. It had a bottom, and then this was the top. And I did this two years ago for the Pinners Conference, and um, I put a new back on it, I put a new top on it, and I put a new light kit in it. I took the wooden shelves out and put in glass shelves. I added a shelf on the bottom down here, um, and then I put some... I don't know if I can get it on camera, but I put some sexy legs on and painted them palmetto green. Um, and I did a crackle on this, and this is a crackle. The base coat was chocolate on this one, and I did fluff on top. So 
it's a little different palette than um, than the window is. Yeah, I did it for um, all the Dixie Belle, and then I did it for all the Wise Owl paints. So that, um, but just to review quickly, you guys, um, check out the classes on my website. It's Christmas in July, and I have a lot of fun classes. And if you're local, sign up. If you're not local, I also have two or three classes on there that are online classes that you can take from anywhere. And I've started doing, um, in the next two weeks, I will start doing um, open, open workshop time where you just pay $10 and come work on whatever project you're in the middle of working on. And if you need help with something, I'll be there to help you. And it's $10 for the three hours. And that will be on Mondays and Wednesdays when I get back from being up at the cabin for two weeks. I'll be doing my lives from the cabin. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a wood plank. I'm going to paint my daughter's downstairs bathroom. And we're going to be doing, hi, Tanya. We're going to be doing um, a wood plank. I'm going to use the wood graining tool, and I'm going to do a wood plank design on the floor in her bathroom. We're just doing it until she gets, she plans on putting new flooring down throughout throughout the whole house but this is just a temporary fix until then and we're going to repaint her kitchen cabinets so um, I will be doing my lives from there and what else um, I guess that's all the news you guys um, I hope I hope you weren't too discouraged by trying to move the camera around and having the camera go off. But thanks for hanging in there with me. I appreciate it very much. And you guys have a great afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye.